Welcome to the Solid Game University channel. This video's topic is basics of tombstone programming. So uh, basically what I'm doing here is, is setting up a tombstone and I've already got some toolpaths added, but uh, basically this one video, I wanna kind of capture all the different uh, functions and setups that you can do inside SolidCamp specifically tailored to a tombstone. So we'll begin by just kind of reviewing my part so far. So I actually have two uh, toolpaths already applied and I've got some fixtures, I've got my tombstone and I've got my solids, my targets all set up. Now let's see how that actually is tombstone related, how that's uh, specific to the tombstone. So first off, I've got uh, corner systems for each each part basically. Uh, so that's one way we're going to use that later for programming. And once we get out of here, let's take a look at my stock. So in Tombstone, my recommendation is to actually have individual solids for each stock on the part itself, in the setup itself. So we have multiple targets and multiple solids. This way, we can do 3D toolpaths like 3D eye machining, HSR, that sort of thing. And we don't have to worry about uh, what stock is remaining or anything like that. If we do uh, all kinds of toolpaths and stuff to so the first part, you'll see later that with our transform command, we're actually going to apply it to the other solids, and then the stock uh, for each solid will be updated. So that is independent stocks and independent targets. So I literally just went in there and chose each one. Okay, now in terms of fixtures, we're setting up the tombstone and all those vices as fixtures. And I did that under the setup sheet. So under fixture, if I just click in the right side of the cell, I'll get like a little pull down menu. And if I click on these three dots, I can select any solid on the screen as a fixture, just like we would with a target or a stock. Now here I've got five vices and a tombstone and in each vice, all these little individual components. So one quick way to choose anything. Now this applies to stock, target, and fixtures as well. But any time you need to choose something off the screen and there's multiple little solids, you can always click on CAD selection. And what that does is it allows me to go to the feature tree and actually select those five items there. Now, these are actual assemblies. Each Kurt Vice is an assembly. So what I'm actually doing by clicking on that is I'm clicking on everything in that sub-assembly, all these little bits in here. Now I'm just going to hit X because I don't want to reverse what I've done. And in terms of clamping fixture, it was all of those guys there. Now, one other thing to do here, specifically for Tombstone or fourth axis in general, um, is setting up the pivot point. Now, this is something that you'll need to check with your post team to see if it's actually required. If your uh, machine's controller actually can recognize where the fixture is, where the, the Mac one, position one, or any offset is, then you don't need to do this. Um, there is actually two ways to kind of to, to do this thing that we're about to do. The way I did it here was I actually said Mac one position one is sitting this distance away from the pivot point of the tombstone, which is a point that is dead center of the tombstone. You can kind of see it there, but let's just get a transparent view. I actually put a point dead center of the tombstone to represent my pivot point. And then I used evaluate measure. And since I want to know how far away Mach 1 position 1 is, I choose Mach 1 position 1 from the list. And then I just basically said, okay, so the origin of Mach 1 position 1 to the origin of the, of the pivot point of the tombstone. And that's where I got those numbers from. And you can do that for each origin that you need to add a pivot point to. Now, that's one way to do it. The other way, if your machine doesn't have actually... Uh, uh, accept that or your post processor does not actually accept that. The other way is literally to make Mac one position one a pivot point of your tombstone and then just make all these other solids, all these other coordinate systems as indexed positions or uh, completely separate offsets, let's say Mac two position one, but then you, you actually tell the relationship between Mac one and Mac two. So there's another way to do that. Check with your post member to know for sure exactly what needs to be done here. So. That is the stocks, the solids, the fixtures, and the setup of the coordinate systems. Okay, so let's actually see how I set up the fixture in the first place. So I still have one empty space on the tombstone. So what I'll do, I'm gonna go over to the feature manager and you can actually go into insert components, 
look for an assembly, in this case, this one right here. Usually I just bring it in and I let it float in space somewhere because I need to add mates. So in that same tab where we insert the components, right next to it is mates. And I'm just going to do some quick mates just to get this thing on screen. So for instance, we'll just say that face is coincident with that face. We'll make that flush. Uh, what I normally do is I would say, if I want this to be centered on this face, let's say we can go to advanced mates, width, and say in between these two faces of the tombstone, I want to center the vice between these two faces. So basically I'm, I'm choosing two sets of faces and I'm telling SolidWorks and SolidCam to put them equal distance from each other. So that is now centered on that face. Okay, now, like always with mates, you need to make sure that it's set in all three directions. So we basically have, let's say this coordinate system here, we have Z set up, we have Y set up, but we don't have X. I can actually move this thing around. So we need to just uh, you know, tailor it in somewhere, anchor it in somewhere. So I'll go back to standard mates, coincidence, and I'll just say, you know, we'll just say these two faces are coincidence, for example. But again, using the mates on the side here, you can pretty much set this up any way you want. Some of these I actually set up to be a certain distance away from each wall, but what we're doing here is just kind of doing it quick. Okay, so with the mates in place, you'll see now that the vice is added to the feature tree. Now what I usually do here, if I have something like a vice with all these moving parts and components and parts in here, is I wanna make sure I can actually move this vice. You see here, it's all fixed in place. I can't grab that and move that, where in reality, I probably would be able to. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell SolidWorks that this vice right here in the tree, I'll just right click on it and click on this icon to flex, make it flexible. So now, the mates that I chose to, to control this thing are still in control, but this thing can move as if it was, in real life, a vice. Now, we need to put another stock and target in there. So um, what I'm about to do could have been done with the vice as well, because I have so many vices in here. I didn't actually go and insert, insert components each time. What I actually did was just make a copy of the ones that are already there. And I'm going to do that with our design model, because I want to have an exact copy of the design model in all those vices. So holding the control key on my keyboard and then clicking on the solid in the, in the feature tree allows me to make a copy of it. Okay, you see there how it adds it to the list. Now I'll just mate that to my new vice. So we'll just do some more quick vices, uh, quick mates here. So we'll just say this face right here to this face. And we'll accept that. We'll say this face of the stock to this face. And because the vice subassembly was made flexible, it moved the jaws so that those are in place. Okay, so let's continue with this. So we'll go to my favorite mate over here, width, and we'll just center the stock. Let's move that out. We'll center the stock, those two faces between these two faces of the vice. All right, now, like I said, uh, that is Z. And that is X, but now we have to figure out what to do with Y. This thing is just floating in space. So we'll just go back to standard mates. We'll say, put in a distance mate. Distance mate is essentially just, I want to choose two things and give them a distance apart. So in this case, I'll do a quarter of an inch. And we'll say from the top of that jaw to the bottom of the stock, we'll make it quarter of an inch. Now, here's the mistake. The, the dimension is in the wrong direction. Well, I'll just come over to the left side, say flip dimension. So it's still between those two faces, still a quarter of an inch, but now it's in that direction. And that is in the correct location there. Okay. So, fix your setup. Target and stock, need to add those to the overall list. So we'll go back to solid cam. Let's go to stock. And to literally make that part of the list, I just got to click on it. So there we go. Let's go to targets, and we need to add that stock. Now, we have a transparent solid here. 
I just need to click through it. So I'll go right click on it, select other, and it gives me a list of everything behind my mouse when I right click. In this case, the face of the target is what I'm looking for. I have now added the target. Okay. And I have one more fixture I need to add too. So let's update that as well. So we'll go back, double click on setup, left click on the right side of that cell just to get to my definition. And it wants to define a brand new one, but I'm just going to edit the old one by going in my list and saying clamping fixture. It'll bring up all the solids I previously selected. And to do it quickly, I'm just going to click on the ones that I, I care about. Just the two jaws. We'll save those two guys there. All of that. Click on the green check mark and it adds it to the list. So basically, that's what I did for the other five. So now that has been reset up. Now let's add a coordinate system. Now, this is the sixth solid that I'm adding to this. And because of what I want to do later, I want to put the coordinate system on that, that stock a certain way. I want it to match the way I did it on Mac 1. So here's how we did it on Mac 1. It's in the top corner, and the y-axis points towards those two holes. So I want to kind of do the same thing with this. So we'll go to Coordinate System Manager, Add. I'm going to make sure that this is Mac 6. And I'm just going to select the top face with my top corner model box engaged. Click on that guy right there. Top corner and the y-axis is pointing towards those two holes. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for. Great. And we'll click on the green check mark to accept that. So everything is set up. We can pretty much begin doing our normal toolpaths. So the toolpaths I already have set up here are 3D eye machining for this part. And you'll notice that these two parts on this face are actually the back side of the part. So I have a 3D eye machining set for those as well. Now, one of the things to keep in mind when we're doing this sort of work with this sort of setup is now that we have multiple solids, multiple stocks, if I just did a simple 3D eye machining, it would try and do everything from the stock it sees on this angle. It would do these two parts, maybe these faces, maybe something on the other side as well. So again, we have to limit it with a working area. So I just set up a working area just on the outside of that particular one. So this one operation is just doing part one. Likewise, with this one, on Mac 4, it's just doing that one right there. So you can create toolpaths on individual parts, but this is a large part. We've got six parts here, and I want to do all of them in one go. So how would we do that? Well, basically, we're going to use a transform, and we're going to use a different transform. You'll see here that this one up, this operation right here actually has a new little symbol on there. It kind of looks like a coordinate system. That's because it's using the coordinate system transform. And the way that works, is if I just go to transform, and let's just click edit, you'll see that I have a list of all the coordinate systems inside of this file. And the pink one, or the purple one, whatever color you see there, applies to the originating operation. In this case, Mac 4 position 1. I just did 3D eye machining on that part right there, and then I checked the box for Mac 5, which is this one right here. They're in the similar setup. The coordinate systems are relative to their solid in the same direction. The Y is pointing towards the slot in that case. And when we take a look at that toolpath, need to actually synchronize both of these. When we take a look at that toolpath, even though I programmed it for just the one solid, using the coordinate system transform, it basically understood I want to copy that same toolpath to Mac 5. As long as everything is set up the same way for Mac 5, the coordinate system is pointing the same direction relative to the, to the solid, and there's no other differences to it. They're identical, just they're in different coordinate systems. The toolpath will just copy it. And we'll see that once this is done calculating.
Okay, so calculation is done, and you can see that I only, I only programmed the one, but it copied the toolpath to the second one. So we'll see how we actually did that with this one here, which is the 3D eye machining for Mac 1, and it is the same setup for all the other ones. So we're going to copy that to each one. So to begin, we find the toolpath we want to do it on. In this case, I only have one, so I'll just right-click on the one. We'll go to Transform, and we'll say Coordinate System Transform. We'll include the original operation, and then we'll check the boxes for the other coordinate systems that we'd like it to uh, to apply to. And that's basically everything except for four and five. So I'll say check all, and then just uncheck the box for four and five. And it gives us a little preview as to which coordinate systems this is about to apply to. So pretty much all of them. So we'll click OK, click Save. And there it is. We have 3D eye machining applied to all the parts with that same orientation. Now, if you check this, you'll also notice, I'm just uncheck that box, that I programmed for Mac 1 position 1, and it copied it over to Mac 2 position 1, which is basically facing the same direction. But then we look at Mac 6 and Mac uh, 3. They're, in, they're at 90 degrees to each other, they're 180 to each other, many different angles, because the coordinate system manager, or the coordinate system transform, all it relies on is that the coordinate system is in the right spot relative to the part. So you can have these at different angles, different positions. Um, they're basically on other opposite sides of the tombstone as well, but it just copies it relative to the coordinate system. So that was the basics of Tombstone. Uh, copy, uh, there's a lot of different uh, topics here that are covered specifically in other training videos, but I collected them all in this one video. So if you have any questions on this, any of the parts of this video, give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. Send us your parts or your questions via the ticket system at solidcamsupport.com, or stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.